I'm Eddie Muller. Welcome to Noir Alley, where each week we immerse ourselves in the dark tide that washed over mid-20th century Hollywood. I'm coming to you from Bar 355 in Oakland, California, my hideout for the foreseeable future. Today, I've got a B picture from the studio I call the House of Noir, RKO Radio Pictures. It's Strange Bargain from 1949, starring Jeffrey Lynn and Martha Scott. Parts of this film are like a time capsule of antiquated middle-class America, but the script has a premise that could easily be adapted, perhaps even more believably, to contemporary times. An accountant struggling to make ends meet is offered an unusual business proposition by his boss, who's facing bankruptcy himself. As we say here in Noir Alley, bad decisions make good stories. Unlike Paramount or 20th Century Fox, RKO earned House of Noir status largely through production of B-movies. Whether it was serials like The Falcon or Dick Tracy, or creep shows like the ones created by producer Val Luton, RKO excelled at making entertaining, inexpensive programmers, particularly ones not afraid of the dark. During the 40s, the executive responsible for filling the bottom half of RKO's double bills was tough and taciturn Sid Rogel. He was called a tyrant by producers and directors who worked with him, but no one questioned Rogel's ability at sustaining a high level of quality while obsessing over the company's bottom line. During RKO's peak years, production chief Dory Sherry green-lighted and shepherded top-shelf noirs like The Spiral Staircase, Crossfire, They Live by Night, and The Window. Meanwhile, Sid Rogel oversaw the studio's low-budget product. He produced five pictures starring volatile Lawrence Tierney. That alone will prove how tough he was. And he was the mentor of neophyte director Richard Fleischer, who cut his teeth at RKO, making dynamic B-movies like Bodyguard, The Clay Pigeon, and Armored Car Robbery. But in late 1947, RKO was bought by Howard Hughes, whose questionable business practices and odd behavior led Sherry to quitting and moving to MGM. In his wake, Rogel took over as production chief for everything. Output of A pictures declined as Hughes toyed and tinkered with pet projects. Rogel kept the beleaguered studio above water from 1948 to 52, largely by making modest B pictures that returned small but reliable profits. While Hughes's personal projects like Vendetta and Jet Pilot threatened to drain the studio's coffers. Strange Bargain is a wonderful example of the type of clever and sturdy bee that was RKO's bread and butter. It's based on a story by poet and mystery novelist J.H. Wallace, best known for the book Once Off Guard, which in 1944 became The Woman in the Window, a significant film in the rise of noir. The script of Strange Bargain is by Journey woman, Lily Hayward. She'd been crafting screenplays in every genre since the 20s and had just finished a couple of noir-stained pictures for RKO, Blood on the Moon and Follow Me Quietly, directed respectively by up-and-coming masters Robert Wise and Richard Fleischer. Today's director is a different story. Will Price was making his feature directorial debut after years as a dialogue director, including 1939's the Hunchback of Notre Dame, where he'd met Maureen O'Hara. They were married in 1941, and the couple was dead set on Price directing O'Hara in a major feature. Once he had this film on his resume, Price was hired by Paramount to make the 1950 adventure saga Tripoli, which starred O'Hara. I'm sure Price was part of the deal to get her in the picture. Now, even though he had Harry Wilde, one of RKO's best cameramen at his disposal, Price doesn't display the visual style or storytelling verve of a Wise or a Fleischer. His static direction is bailed out by a smart script and good performances. But I'm sure Sid Rogel appreciated Price getting this 68-minute job finished, on time, and on budget. Now, I'm sure some of you already know that this movie is unique for being, for all intents and purposes, a prequel. The sequel, however, wouldn't appear 
for 38 years. I will explain once we've watched Strange Bargain. If you think the ending of Strange Bargain is kind of a cop-out, so did the producers of the popular TV series Murder, She Wrote, an episode called The Days Dwindle Down, which aired April 19th, 1987, was a sequel to this story, only the tidy wind-up was abandoned. Sam Wilson, played by 78-year-old Jeffrey Lynn, is released from prison after serving 30 years for murdering his boss, Malcolm Jarvis. His wife, Georgia, again played by Martha Scott, convinces amateur sleuth Jessica Fletcher to re-examine her husband's case, contending that Sam was framed. Also returning from the 1949 film, was Harry Morgan as now retired Lieutenant Webb. The unique thing about the episode is that clips from Strange Bargain were used as flashbacks to the original crime. In addition, several well-known actors appeared as older versions of characters in the 1949 film. Richard Beamer played grown-up Sidney Jarvis, son of the murdered man. June Havoc played Thelma Vante, the murdered man's secretary. And Edna Jarvis, the culprit played by Catherine Emery in Strange Bargain, was in the sequel played by Gloria Stewart, 10 years before her big comeback in Titanic. Kudos to Angela Lansbury for keeping so many actors from the classic Hollywood era working well into their 70s and 80s. Jeffrey Lynn was lucky to get the call back. His role in Strange Bargain was originally to be played by either Pat O'Brien or Robert Young. Lynn broke through in pictures in 1939 when he appeared in six features, although the big role he seemed set for, Ashley Wilkes and Gone with the Wind, went to Leslie Howard instead. The Roaring Twenties, made the same year at Warner Brothers, set the tone for Lynn's career. He was the only one of the three boyhood chums, Bogart and Cagney being the others, who doesn't take the crooked road. A slew of stalwart and upstanding roles followed until Lynn joined the Army in 1942. Service on a World War II bomber crew and as an Army intelligence captain earned him a Bronze Star. He picked up his career post-war and continued working as a performer and producer in movies, television, and theater until 1990. He died five years later at the age of 89. Martha Scott enjoyed a similarly long and productive career after kicking it off by creating the character of Emily Webb in the original 1938 Broadway production of Thornton Wilder's Our Town. She played an endless string of loyal wives throughout the 40s and 50s before aging into mother roles. She was Charlton Heston's mother in both The Ten Commandments and Ben-Hur and would later play the mothers of Bob Newhart on his sitcom and Lee Majors on The Six Million Dollar Man. In real life, she was married to jazz pianist Mel Powell, who created the music department at the California Institute for the Arts. Harry Morgan, of course, would go on to portray a pair of iconic TV characters, Detective Bill Gannon, opposite Jack Webb on Dragnet, and Colonel Sherman Potter on the TV series M.A.S.H. It's great that all these actors had such prolonged and durable careers. As for RKO production chief Sid Rogel, by 1950, he'd had enough of Howard Hughes's erratic management and dead-of-night phone calls. He quit the House of Noir, which he'd helped build, and never produced another movie. The director of today's film, Will Price, had only one more picture in him after making Tripoli with his wife, Maureen O'Hara. The couple split after that adventure, and the last movie Price would make was 1956's Rock, 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 notable for being the screen debut of 14-year-old Tuesday Weld. Check in on our social media feeds and let me know what you thought of Strange Bargain. Then come back next week when we'll all be held hostage in a mountain cabin with Cornell Wilde, Gene Wallace, Dan Duryea, and Lee Grant. The picture is Storm Fear from 1955. Let's make it a date. I'll save you a seat at the bar. Till then, see you in the shadows. Next on TCM, The Magnificent Ambersons. Then, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? And later, Pat and Mike. TCM levels the playing field today. <laughs>